your profile picture looks like you're like the villain from Karate Kid Part 2. Two was the one where they went back to Japan and Mr. Miyagi yeah. has to fight his, all, his nemesis. Life or death is all death. Wrong answer, honk. I don't think I look like that guy. Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining us for the PebCAC podcast, a weekly information security show featuring some all-around good people. It is week 24 of 2023, and I'm thankful that it's a different part of the country that's suffering from the wildfire smoke instead of California. The North U.S. is in our thoughts. I'm Chris Lee, and the undisputed Nerf gun battle champion. With me, I have my co-host, Havoc the Mouthpiece, who does not shoot intruders with Nerf darts. You're right. I hug them with my naked body. We're going to leave the house one way or the other. That's the true meaning of a bear hug right there, right? Hips out. Hips out. No, no. Hips in if you're an intruder. You're getting the full (laughs) package, baby. The full package. And we have the returning Glenn Medina back from sunny Las Vegas. How hot was it out there? It was uh, getting a little, getting a little steamy. It was like uh, about ninety degrees on a couple of days. So yeah, it was, uh, it was hot. You but... little baby, that's nothing, man. <laughs> Says the guy that lives in like next to Death Valley. Sure. Right. And Brian's rolling his eyes at ninety degrees. Yeah. What are you showing yeah. over there that can't be seen? Taking my temperature. It's ninety six in my forehead right now. So. <laughs> that's a little cool for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 90 degrees, I'm effing freezing. No guests this week. Combined, we have decades of information security experience and here not just to educate, but to entertain. We've got four awesome stories for this week. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Quick moment of appreciation for Chris, for the listeners. Chris like does all of this prep for the uh, the podcast, right? He goes out and finds his topics. Every once in a while, he'll listen to, listen to us. And then he takes all the audio and cuts out all the cool stuff that I say and uh, puts it together and throws it up on, you know, all the podcasting platforms. So thank you, Chris, for doing that. We appreciate you, man. Because if he didn't, we would be demonetized like every other five seconds. (laughs) No, I mean, maybe because of you, but not me. (laughs) All right. Havoc the mouthpiece. Sure. Uh, You're very welcome. And we don't call you demonetization deech for nothing. Oh, my gosh. Ask the Spursions left and right from you guys, the peanut gallery. <laughs> Just a reminder, check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Pebcac Podcast. We've developed a little bit of a following there, so it's pretty cool that we've got some followers there as another medium to listen to this podcast. This week, we're going to talk about a new Gmail security feature being abused, an unpopular change at the popular website Reddit, For our third topic, a hardware vendor recommends throwing out their appliances, and we'll close with revisiting Apple's product launch. For our first topic, Gmail followed the social media companies and added verification check marks for some senders in an effort to cut down on successful phishing campaigns. If you get an email from, let's say, Norton LifeLock, and it doesn't have the verified check mark that Norton should have, then you can reasonably believe it's a phishing email. It's a good idea to add additional layers of identity verification to prevent impersonation. Good in theory if it works. While some clever hackers out there found a way to exploit this using some type of SPF spoofing attack to mimic trusted brands and senders, to have their phishing emails display the coveted verified checkmark icon. Google initially closed the security report as, quote, working as intended, but after immense pressure from the security community, it was re-examined and reopened and Google is working on a fix. Verified checkmarks in Gmail. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? I don't think that they were anticipating that was going to go wrong, to be honest with you. And I'm all done with the, like, I used to like the blue check mark, even though I couldn't get verified. But, like, now it's just, like, it's everywhere. It's on Twitter. Yeah. I think it's on Instagram. Like, it's just, like, I don't know who who's a sound voice in any of this. I think there may be some instances as well, right, where people are just, uh, e- even on emails, they're sending, an, a, a like, an emoji of a, of a blue check mark. And that's, like, yeah. the simplest thing. You're like, all right. So we still go back to layer one, which is the user itself, just to say, 
Hey, mm, I don't layer eight. Layer eight. eight. Is it layer, layer eight? One's physical. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> layer eight, the actual user itself. Just train them. Like, hey, if you don't have a Nort- anything to do with Norton LifeLock, just delete the dang email. So. Yeah, it's true. There's somebody in our company Slack that uses the blue checkmark emoji next to his name, so it makes it look like he's a verified user on on Slack, even though no no such thing exists. Ooh, I'm doing we, that next. That's such a great idea. That. Heck yeah, we should do that on our podcast. Blue checkmark. You do it on Instagram. It's like eight dollars a month. Well, we By the way, I think I'm, I might be done with Instagram. I might be canceling that one next. When just when I got on, you're gonna you're gonna come off. What are you talking? What are you doing here, man? I know. We'll I just find another way to send you memes. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, memes. <laughs> I can't. I can't tag you anymore in our our uh, audiogram posts. Then. Yeah. I'll keep it I'm for st- that. You guys talk me into it. I'm still using. I'm still using <laughs> Geo City. I'm still using Geo Cities, man. To build your website with your fax <laughs> machine and your landline over there. Yeah, you know it. I'm telling you, if they would bring MySpace back, I would totally do that. And you guys would not be in my top eight, just to be a jerk. <laughs> I thought MySpace did come back as like a music platform. Yeah. Didn't Justin Timberlake buy it? Did he really? Oh, I think so. Well, there's a list of bad decisions. Yeah, like Friendster. Remember Zynga, the blogging site? Mm-hmm. X-E-N-G-A. Really? Zynga was a blogging site? I thought it was yeah, a game. Zing- that's Zynga, Z Y N G A, I think. Zynga, X Y N G A is the, the gaming yeah. platform. I thought that was yeah. an, an imaging hoster. No? All right. What do I know? <clears throat> <laughs> well, I commend them for trying to do this. I, I think the next wave of verified check marks is going to be SMS, text based messaging, or iMessage. Because I, I know, like, Apple. Like the Apple support, I've chatted with them through iMessage before. Like, well, why not? This is their platform. And it actually says Apple verified support, blue check mark or whatever. That's I think what? that's probably going to be next for identity verification that I'm actually chatting with real Apple support and not some guy in India trying to steal so, my credits. So what do you visually see in the phone? Normally where you this... see the phone number or the contact, it says... Uh-huh. Apple support, and I think it has like a blue or a gold check mark next to it. That's like can't, you can impersonate that, though, can't you? The, is that totally impossible on their platform? I think it will be possible because with iOS 16, I think there was that contact card feature. So uh-huh. It says if I'm communicating with Glenn, and oh, Glenn updated his Memoji and his his contact info, then I just hit update, and then then I'm taking your word for it that you put actual the correct information there and it automatically updates my contact of you. So in theory, you can create a contact card that says Apple support blue check mark. Someone doesn't notice it and then they hit update and then it'll show up as Apple support blue check mark. I think I did that with I don't know if it was American Airlines or like Amex or something like that where I had a, a chat going on. Maybe not. I definitely did it with Apple before, and I remember seeing that. I thought, oh, okay, that's kind of that's interesting. So, so think about what you know the process of of just you know trying to get, get by that is first you break into someone's contact um, contacts, right? Then you add yourself as a as in a contact with a blue check mark as the you know kind of image, and then you send a text, and then it looks like you're coming from Apple because now. You've uh, you've essentially done t- you you've had it's a two it's a two step process, but you can essentially bypass that just by adding yourself into someone's contacts. Yeah, sending them an, an unsolicited message and then making it hitting, look like making them hit the update button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could think of the social engineering ways, like hi, I'm from Apple Support. Yeah, your account's about to be locked. Hit update so you can update your contact or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can imagine this being abused in some way again. Right, hopefully that'll stop those dumb text messages we get. Oh, your Wells Fargo account's locked out. Log in. You'll know, click here to log in and change your password. <laughs> be great if I had a Wells Fargo account. <laughs> <laughs> I think preventing phone numbers from getting spoofed 
would go a long way. So the the FTC here or FCC here in the U.S. we have that shaking slash stir where there's PKI based phone number dialing that you have to cryptographically prove you own the phone number. Yeah, that's what we really need to stop these dumb spoofing attacks. I agree. Do you know how hard it is to teach my grandma to use a longer than four digit pin on her iPad? I'm not going to get her to do that. <laughs> Oh, the good thing is you don't have to get her to do that. It's the telecom companies have to start enforcing it that unless this is a digitally signed phone number, we're not going to allow the call to go through. Right now, the NSA is freaking out. This is a terrible idea. (laughs) I can't spoof the uh, the FBI anymore. Do you guys remember the uh, the screensavers? It was a a TV show. Which one? Yeah, I've I've heard of it. I, I don't think I ever saw it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that one time, this, this blew me away. It's pretty common now, but uh, it was a show. I can't remember the, one of the guy's names. The other one was Kevin Rose. And they had Kevin. on G4? G4 Tech yeah. TV? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah I know. TV. I know what you're talking about then, yeah. Yeah, and they had, uh, it was right when Kevin Mitnick just got out of prison, they had him on. He was sponsoring his uh, uh, book that he had written, which actually was like wildly great, but then. He he was showing caller ID spoofing, and I remember he's just like he's like watch this. He's like does his thing, and he, he had I think oh, it was Leo Laporte. I think he, he called him, and it looked like the phone number was coming from like the White House, right? Like, it's like <laughs> oh man, this is I gotta figure out how to do that. But it, it turns out so easy. It's this uh, it inherited is. Tr- uh, trust at the end of the day. And then and the reason we can't have nice things is, of course, backwards compatibility, that not all telecoms are going to support this. Inevitably, one phone carrier won't be able to talk to another, and then somebody's going to get sued. Backwards compatibility, the bane of our existence. That's the entire reason SMB v1 still exists, and that came out with Windows for net groups. Did you hear that? Or did it edit it out? I just heard it garbled. You doing a chicken call or something? No, I burped. And oh. It was a loud, throaty one, though. I was... Lovely. Havoc yeah. the mouthpiece right there. So That's not the monetization, though. <laughs> Might lose a bit of our audience there, though. Well, on that gaseous note, for our second topic, popular website Reddit is going the way of Twitter and will begin charging exorbitant amounts of money to use their API. Like Twitter, they used to let apps use the API for free, but as Reddit gets ready for an IPO, they want to extract every dollar out of their use and will start charging for their API. On April 18th, Reddit announced changes that it would be coming to the API, mainly that it'd be moving to a paid model for these third-party apps. A popular Reddit app, Apollo, has made the decision to permanently shut down on June 30th because the new pricing model does not make financial sense to keep the app up and running. Reddit will begin charging $12,000 for 50 million API requests, and given the number of people that use Apollo, that means that Apollo would be paying $20 million per year for use of that API, and that's just unfeasible for the owner of the app to pay even if he moved to a subscription model. By contrast, Imager charges $113 for the same amount of API calls. So think of $12,000 versus $113. You can see why everybody's really, really upset at this. Many popular... Go ahead. No, go ahead, Ben. Many popular subreddits are going dark or switching to private for two days starting on June 12th to protest these changes. If you remember a few years ago, popular websites like Wikipedia also went dark to protest the so-called SOPA law, the Stop Online Privacy Act, which would have severely undermined the internet and would have allowed governments to just shut down websites. Reddit only got popular after another site, Dig, with two Gs, angered its users and prompted a mass exodus. And will this spell the demise of Reddit? So today I learned, that's a popular subreddit, that uh, they have an API. I had no idea. And I don't, like, I can't, the sheer fact that Reddit thinks it can go public blows my mind. Like, I I think they've pretty much topped out on the number of users. I don't know that they're going to gain 
anything else that's going to help them grow year over year. They, they have to have hit a ceiling. They go in the Twitter model. They, <clears throat> they've actually said in interviews that they said running the API is not that expensive. Like they could, in theory, charge one hundred thirteen dollars like imager chargers, and they would not lose money. The real opportunity cost is the user eyeballs because in Apollo, since I'm using an API to pull content from my favorite subreddits, it does not pull the ads. So Apollo is ad free version of Reddit. So Reddit saying, well, we're losing hundreds of millions of dollars on ad revenue because you're using this API instead of coming directly to our site or using our official app, which the official app is total crap. They bought blue alien a couple years ago. They ran into the ground and it's a completely unusable but you know it shows ads which is where they're expected to make most of their money so you brought up dig what's kind of funny about that you go back to the the tv show the screensavers kevin rose uh did like a little segment on dig and what people didn't know is that kevin rose had a an, a vested interest in seeing dig actually take off so that like i think he was like a co-owner or something like that so he had a stake in that business and he leveraged that platform to get people to go to it. And so Dig got really, really popular. And I only heard about Reddit because I, I didn't even know what happened. All I know is that every single post on Dig one day was a Reddit post. And so then I was like, oh, it must be something to do this Reddit thing. So I went over there and I was like, all right, this is at least it's not being bombarded with nonsense. And then Imager came about because Reddit needed a way to actually host images easily mm -hmm, yeah. right they didn't, they didn't have a way that. of doing it and i think imager is like their own thing now right like don't they have like uh like its own community they can sign in and stuff yeah it's it's its own separate company it's an image hosting platform it's most of reddit uses imager but imager has lots of other applications outside of reddit as well i heard uh i think there was a uh ask me anything with imager and maybe maybe it was on there maybe it wasn't but he went into the difficulties of like uh, around child exploitation material do you remember that no i don't think i saw that one that was like one of the hardest things about running the business is trying to figure out like how do you filter out the good from the bad and what's good what's bad oh just... yeah yeah yes I, I remember what you're talking about that they I, I think that was the recent change so imager recently maybe within a month or so they banned all not safe for work content under the guise of there's so much <laughs> adult content on our website hosting. It's getting increasingly difficult to determine what's legal and what's not. So they just drew a line in the sand. It's no more safe for no more. Not for yeah. not safe for oh. work content period. Yes. Yeah, well, they probably have such rule. a, yeah. They, they probably, like, can you comment on that website? Like, is it like, is it like Reddit? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. They'll be fine. But yeah, 12, yeah, back to your point. I don't, yeah. I, I left Reddit years and years ago and uh, I I get the ad revenue thing that they're they're trying to point across, but I also think these are a bunch of idiots that are you know, drinking their own Kool-Aid and think they can just charge based upon that. I don't know that I would have ever bought anything from a Reddit ad. I know you two guys haven't. Or have you? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're being targeted. I don't think I've ever. Had. I have not. Yeah, I've used Apollo, which hides the ads. And then there used to be a trick if you would go to the Reddit website. Well, first you use you block Origin, and that blocks it. But if you're on mobile and you don't have an ad blocker, the bot that posts all the ads, you could block them because you could block users, like annoying users, and they would never show posts from those users. So you just block the bot that posts the ads, and that would hide the ads until Reddit figured that out and prevented you from blocking that user oh that's funny reddit was yeah. good back in the day not so much anymore you know you know i, but, I do have to admit it's been really good you know with the new was it the new iphone policy that you know not share data between applications yeah, cross app tracking cross app tracking has been so nice i'm just not getting as many gar much garbage inside there as i used to i don't know if you guys are seeing that yeah uh, i really like that feature that iPhone has been committed to privacy and not letting companies track you and to see that how much it annoys Zuck on every earnings call for Facebook he talks about how much revenue they've lost due to this Apple change like that means it's working and it's doing what it's supposed to 
Yeah, I just but wish Apple's they would capitalizing apply that. on it, right? I don't think so. Not really. No, they're not no. an ad company. Yeah. yeah, they don't make money on ads. They're preventing their rivals from making money, so it's more of a blocking and annoying other companies. Oh, that's right. They plan on making their money with their thirty-five hundred dollar ski mask goggles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you are a hundred percent right on, like on the money on how much it was going to cost. It's like you buy a good used car for thirty-five hundred bucks. Well, maybe yeah. an old S Honda Civic, like a ninety-four, but still, that's a good car. I wonder if you can write that off as a medical expense, saying that you need the 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 prescriptive lenses that are inside there. So yes, yeah, so, or at least use your FSA dollars. Yeah. So could you can can you, can you use those goggles to actually see better? Let's save this for topic four because this oh, is yeah. topic four yeah, sorry, today. Sorry. <laughs> the the reason for another backlash for why people are comparing this to Twitter and Twitter is actually a little bit better because Twitter pays their mods. Twitter pays people to run their trust and safety layer. Reddit does not. So all the moderators of all the subreddits, 100% volunteer work. And there were tools that you could use that uses the API to help moderate these subreddits. So yeah, I could write a rule that says every time you post an image, that's not from imager block it. Cause that's spam. Anytime I see this keyword block it because it's spam and that relies on those APIs. So now all of a sudden you're charging for tools for people that do volunteer work for you. That's that that's upsetting to the community. And then the lot, my last point there is uh, things like screen reader software for visually disabled people that also relies on an API. Now Reddit did make a small exception for these, these, you know, ADA accommodation software. I think they have to because of the Americans with Disability Act, but they said they're not going to make exceptions for anybody else. Until they start losing money. So <laughs> and money and users. Yeah. yeah and, users and users are the money because Reddit's a free site. It's free to yeah. go to. You don't have to pay any money. So that's what we always say. Then you are the product. They're marketing and advertising to you. Didn't Reddit go through there a couple of years ago and in, in hot in like hostility? Wait, what's the word? Not hostage. Uh, whatever. Didn't they? Uh, didn't Reddit come in a couple of years ago and start taking over subreddits from people, like taking stealing ownership of it, for, like the really popular ones? Was sort it sort of. Yeah. Was there that was an a, effort to go public? What was that about? Yes. Yeah, it was an effort to go public. So there was a little history of Reddit. So Reddit was took all the refugees from Dig, and they were the premier free speech platform, sort of like what Jack Dorsey wanted to, to do with Twitter. And as same way Twitter went, so Reddit started getting cracking down more and more on things. There used to be a subreddit dedicated to shoplifting. There used to be a, a Reddit a subreddit dedicated to dark marketplaces, how to buy drugs online. There's a subreddit that, uh, there's a subreddit that posted images of underage girls in scantily clad outfits. So not naked. So it wasn't child exploitation material, but it was very borderline risque photos. It was called our jail bait. And then as Reddit tr was getting ready to go public, they just banned all this stuff because it's not a good look for that. A public company is running in, a subreddit called our jailbait and posting these, these kinds of photos. And that's when they started taking over some of the, some of the more popular subreddits to curate the material, to push a narrative and to make it more uh, palatable for investors. So it's taking over the same as bannings. So I would assume like if you have like a subreddit dedicated to young kids, that isn't necessarily, but it's teetering, right? They probably didn't, like this restrict people who can come in. They were probably just banning people. From that was banned. Yeah, so that was banned. Yeah. I I don't know if shoplifting is banned or not. I know the dark marketplace one for sure is banned. There were a couple yeah, good subreddits from a visual display thing, so but they're all fun. <laughs> fun and games. Just something to casually glance at as you're going through the airport. It's also fun to see how people evade the filters. Like there was a popular subreddit. I think it was... MMA streams and it would post links to like pirated MMA streams. Oh, yeah. And then after after that got banned, they changed the streams at the stream the S at the end of streams to Z MMA streams with a Z. And then that was popular for a while. And then that got banned. And then it was MMA streams two MMA streams three. It was, it was like whack a mole. <laughs> it's like you try to 
ban these things and people always find a way to evade oh, the, so, so the awesome. security. Yeah, but at least for me, once Apollo's gone, I'm I'm done with Reddit. I don't like their website. I don't like their official app. And I really hope they change their mind, but history's any indicator they're they're not. To me, I thought I think the biggest attraction to Reddit back in the day was the the dialogue. It was like the the comments, like going back and forth on on anything, along with the ask me anything were always great. Like when we'd bring in some some big name people. But it was it was always this funny to see how quirky some people were you know or witty or whatever yeah yeah i don't know if it's yeah, so comments like that, but. <laughs> comments are always the best part yeah uh, so this was a user submitted story and the user that or a listener submitted story and the listener also told me there's a new website come up called lemmy l-e-m-m-y that's that's coming up that's supposed to be the reddit replacement i took a look at it and lemmy is actually a lot like mastodon so how the uh, Twitter refugees went over to Mastodon. I think the Reddit refugees are supposedly going over to Lemmy. And Lemmy is like a loosely federated open source link aggregator platform. It's It was a little too much for me to figure out at the time, but this is supposedly also going to be an alternative to Reddit. Is that like a backslap to the folks that are going over from Reddit? Because the name Lemmy reminds me of Lemmings. So are we all just kind of following path? from one application <laughs> to the next. Maybe. I don't know where the name Lemmy came from. I I really hope this blackout on the 12th does something. Uh, it's it's gaining a lot of popularity. Most of the subreddits I subscribe to are going to be dark on those days. I think productivity will go through the roof on those days. And then again yeah. on July 1st, after Apollo shits down, productivity might go through the roof as well. But... Yeah. We will All in the name of going public. Yeah. Where does, real quick before we move on, where does Discord fall into Reddit like as a competition? Because I, I see, like, uh, like my, my son's age, like, Reddit's not even a thing. It's everyone's using Discord instead. Discord's a place to talk about things. I don't think it's, it's, Reddit's like a link aggregator, and Discord is just a place for people to, socialize so i think they're i think they play in two different markets and discord's very very much gaming focused even though people use it for other things for our third topic security appliance vendor barracuda is urging its customers with compromised and infected email security gateway or esg appliances to replace not patch their devices it's not often that a zero-day vulnerability can destroy hardware, but Barracuda is reporting that their email security gateway appliances are still showing indicators of compromise even after they've been fully patched. To their credit, Barracuda is replacing the appliances at no cost to their customers. The problem lies in the attachment scanning feature that's basically a path traversal bug due to lack of input validation. If you send an email with a specially crafted attachment in a tar file format, the parser interprets the attachment and can give arbitrary file rights leading to remote command injection. So who could have seen this coming with an, inter an interpreter for email file attachments? Well, I didn't, or else I would have exploited it years ago. So there's that. And uh, what a clever way to do a hardware refresh, you know? Keep people on a, a beefier platform, maybe bundle in some new features, make yeah, them pay for it. Hire some hacker to spread this zero day through their appliances. They said about 5% of their appliances are affected. So that's that's actually a lot. Well, what do you think the attach rate is on? Like, if you found out that they were forcing you to update because, because of a, a fault, not due to you, but just because of the devices that you purchased, I'd almost be like, well, I guess it's a good reason for me to just get an RFI going and, and, and get some new email protection. Yeah. Not a good I think marketing campaign. It hurts their image for sure, but yeah. people have these vulnerable and infected devices. They got to do something with it in the meantime. Hey, well, yeah, uh, that... I'm just going to say it right now, I'll probably ruin a lot of uh, re uh, relationships, but anyone that has Barracuda doesn't really care about their image. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're treading life just to save water. Or they're treading water to save their life at this moment in time. They're, uh, they're, 
They're about to what is that? Down. Do you think they're just used at school still, like school districts, because they're so cheap? I mean, I used to, they used to be advertising everywhere at all the airports. Now I don't see them at all. Yeah, that's that's what I was about to say. I said, well, yeah. they're also their target audience is also people that believe billboards at the airport as well. Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> and signs at the beach, right? So they fly those big banners at the beach. So it's always fun. I wouldn't know. I don't to go to the guys. beach. Yeah. I wonder if one of the reasons why this they're actually suggesting this is because the Lord knows how long this remote command injection has been there that you're you're band-aiding that hole, but there was such a giant gap, right, to allow stuff in that the variety of attacks are kind of like unlimited. Like once you're in, like, yeah, you, you can do something similar as everyone else, so you can do it a hundred different ways. That must be one of the reasons why. They said attackers began exploiting it in October 2022, but to your point, who knows how long it's been in there. And I I can sort of sympathize with Barracuda in so far that that technically is a security best practice that if you get a device that gets popped, you don't want that on your network anymore because you, even if you wipe it, even if you replace the hard drive on it, some of these root kits get embedded in the the like the UFI, the bootloader that's on in the firmware on the motherboard, you, you there's no way to get rid of it until you just replace the hardware. So that's not a bad security uh, incident response plan. It's just throw out all your well, hardware. I, and get yeah, I hardware. think that goes to, I think maybe it was not, not something similar, but I remember, you know, uh, I was it, I don't know if it was Cisco or, or Palo Alto or, or uh, one of the others where, you know, they, had blown capacitors right and it's like well you need to you need to rma those and then send them out and then ended up becoming something else and it's like well it's the hardware that's bad you know you think you would have basically a campaign to just you know swap one out for the another and just know that you're coming up with a clean device right so you're not necessarily you just come out in good faith and you say listen i know we know it's our fault what we're going to do is basically swap your device for something very similar whether it be the chassis or the guts or the internals but, you know, there's, there's not going to be a cost to the customer. And I think that would be a better marketing campaign than forcing companies to, to, to buy new hardware. So that, that is what Barracuda is doing. They said, we, we messed up. We recognize it. We'll send you a new one. You there send you your go. infected one back and we'll throw we'll it see. in the shredder or whatever. But it's still yeah. gigantic yeah. hassle. Totally. I know they were public for some time, and I think they got bought out by a PE firm. And it sort of follows the PE acquisition playbook that after they get acquired, they extract as much value as they can, and there's no innovation on the product. Yep. Been through there. <laughs> Total bravo. Okay, so... So you're, you are right. So a Barracuda got acquired by Toma Bravo then when they went private. And then KKR bought it from Toma Bravo. So it's changed hands a couple times. For our last topic, and it will be a rotating topic every week. This week, we're going to talk about what we got right and what we got wrong about Apple's headset release. First, we got the name wrong. It's called Apple Vision Pro, not Apple VR. But I did get it right that it would have an external battery pack and cost 3500 bucks. This is truly a V1 product, and the pro name that they attach to it implies that this is the top-of-the-line model. When the Apple Watch came out, people called it dumb, but now it's an essential piece of health tracking equipment. When the iPad came out, people called it a giant iPhone, but now it's a solid productivity device. Time will tell if Apple got it right with this one or if they missed the mark. In my opinion, they might be following the Tesla business model. Because if you remember, Tesla's very first car was a $150,000 Roadster. Then they came out with the Model S, which was a $100,000 sedan, a $100,000 SUV. And then a $50,000 sedan when the Model 3 came out. After many years of selling these $50,000 Model 3s, they released the base model Model 3, which is about $35,000. So they started high, building that luxury and exclusivity for their brand, then they went down market. 
It was a risky bet since there were very dark days when the Model 3 was scaling up in production and they nearly went bankrupt. Apple could have picked up all of Tesla for about $10 billion, but Tim Apple would not even take the meeting. And now Tesla is, it was, and is nearing again, a trillion dollar company. You know, I feel like the, the grass is greener with you on this. I don't know. <laughs> it is. A, it, and I think if this was a, a truly a pro top of the line, they would have called it Apple Vision Pro Max. Or maybe that would be the, uh, you, the second version. Where you get a, oh, you yeah, get a full helmet it, yeah. instead of that yeah. big thing that just sits in front of your eyes. <laughs> it's the helmet. You get 360 cams. So yeah. You can literally see behind you. <laughs> and a catheter. That way you don't have to ever get up. <laughs> The, the Apple Ultra. catheter. So there's going to be the Pro Max and there'll be the Pro Ultra. I, I just laugh at the fact that, you know, during that whole market, the, the marketing and the videos that we're showing, maybe only one or two of the shots had the extended battery plugged in or the battery plugged in. And everyone else was just using it without, you know, without that plug that was going down the back when they showed the back of a person. I was like, OK, so how realistic is that? Because if you sit on a couch with anything tied to your hip, it's just totally uncomfortable, right? So I don't think that's uh, visually visually or, or portraying that, that, that light really well. I like I the you, part I mean, of the announcement where they demonstrate watching a movie on an airplane. Like, I would never wear this thing on an airplane. I would never <laughs> yeah. wear this thing in public. I still stand by that. Like, look at that idiot over there oh, with this headset you, on. I don't know if you guys remember today. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> Teach. But I don't know if you remember the day, but when the iPads came out, I saw people at Disneyland using the iPad to take pictures, like a big piece of equipment. And I'm like, how dumb are you that you're actually taking an iPad out to take pictures when there's perfectly good f uh, phones and as well as uh, as cameras that would probably do a better job, right? Yeah, that's that's not that uncommon. I went to a wedding one time, and they made the explicit amount announcements like "Do not pull out your iPad to take pictures." It blocks the view. <laughs> <laughs> like that actually became a thing that we had to oh, warn man. people about. Sorry, you were saying, Deech. So number one, I'm with Chris. I don't think I'm. Gonna, I don't think I would wear that outside of the house. Number two, can you imagine if you had that on plus your giant? headphones that you have on right now chris for audio because does, does yeah, it, even have it audio? has audio you, but i think it it's even, speakers right that. they're not into your ear yeah I, I think glenn's right yeah it's not into your ear and i was a little bit confused about that too because when tim apple was up there he says you know, put on this headset and then you plug in your airpods and you're fully immersed with spatial audio so i think there are i think there there's some audio built in but then they also said pair this with your airpods I think I think uh, they're going to come out with something about Mary Two, and the little uh, brother that's running around is like, "Have you seen my baseball?" And have the VR goggles on, along with the uh, Air Max Pro Max, whatever those things. Yeah. What are those? What do you have on your head right now, Chris? Air, Air, AirPod Max. AirPod Max. Yeah, the, over the ear. Okay, so audio is not built in. That could that could be whatever. I would say, kind of the one cool feature is that. When you put it on, like it just recognizes you. Like no one's ever going to see or have access to what you have. Maybe they'll do profiles, but like it's like whatever you have there is just for you, which is kind of cool from a from a privacy standpoint. And then the other part is I'm hoping that the avatar for FaceTime. I hope I hope there's like a beauty feel, filter on there, make me look a little bit more jacked, you know. But, but didn't that seem weird? Though? Didn't that Trick seem weird? Though? So thinking. here here you are. You're FaceTiming somebody with that thing on. Is it just just your eyes that are being seen, or is it a full camera? What what what's what's? No, it's like it's an avatar. It's right? an avatar. Yeah, it's like yeah. waist up. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It, it can't see right? your face. Yeah, so. your entire face. But so that's the whole point avatar, of yeah. having a a FaceTime conversation is that you can see your people's faces, you can see their expressions, not just an avatar, right? So. Yeah, Avatar will record yeah, your I know. expression. I don't know about like micro expressions and things like that. Like like Zoom. Zoom can when you have your avatar on Zoom, it can record your movement. It can't I do think, hands, it can't do I think, micro expressions or anything, but yeah. it, it can at least So move I its think mouth you guys correctly. know that when anybody, anyone has an avatar on in Zoom, you look at them and you go, What a dork. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. We we did that on a call the other day and someone said my my avatar looks like Jose, Jose uh -huh. that works with us. And I, I told him, I said, 
Zoom doesn't have a whole lot of options, especially for Asian uh-huh. American males. Like, there's not a whole lot of options for like hair and facial because because like the avatar on Zoom, like the mustache connects to the beard. I'm like, I don't know that many Asian people that have enough hair follicles that could actually well, do that. Yeah, the Asian <laughs> and you can't customize the it. The Asian avatar for a for the Asian avatar on Zoom is basically the panda, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> just be all the panda <laughs> so i'm curious on you guys stance on facetime so i think the facetime should be used like if you're traveling right like in your hotel room and you need to communicate with the kids uh maybe if you haven't seen family in a long time like you just do facetime what i don't think it's for is freaking driving <laughs> and facetiming seems like ridiculous that and the other one is like dangerous or at the store, or like walking around, like I can't, like, and especially when it's on speaker, I want to punch people in the face. Yeah. And like, this is like, I think it must be because I'm, I'm in the over forty crowd. Like, I would never, like, if if anyone in my family tries to FaceTime me, and I'm not in the privacy of my office or inside my house, I'm like declining call. I'm like, why are you trying to FaceTime me? You like, no, I'm at the gym. Like, why? I don't want to be sitting here <laughs> screaming. Yeah. Like, it seems so weird. Well, just even people that have their phones on speaker walking through public areas, they're like. Hey, dumb, just put on the headset or take it off freaking speaker because I don't want to hear your conversation. So, yeah, agreed. Yeah, I, I, I do it in the grocery store. I always carry my AirPod Pros with me. So I always put my headset on. And it's usually when I have to call the wife and says, is this the cheese you want? Or is it this brand? Or do you want thin sliced? Do you want thick sliced? And, and then as soon as I get my decision, we're, we're yeah, you're not having a whole conversation like how's your day yeah. type thing. Right. Yeah. And it's just to save me from sending like yeah. 20 pictures. Like, is it this cheese? Is it that cheese? Is it this cheese? I'm like, no, just kind of FaceTime and point to the so, one. You so want. we should poll our cheese is a main food group should, in your we house. We should poll our listeners. How many out there walk through the grocery store on full blast versus those that yeah. pr- prefer a little privacy? We have a high class of listener. What do you mean, Glenn? <laughs> we don't have to poll. You never I don't know. know listeners would do such a you thing. You never know. <laughs> hey, I, I'm going to give a. Uh, kudos to southwest airlines the other day when i was on a plane they're like hey if you're watching a movie you need headphones if not you need to turn it off i was there like finally go. i would sit there sometimes and people would just be blaring stuff i'm like oh my gosh you're ridiculous yeah i think every airline i've been on so alaska united and delta as of recently they they do say that they say if you're watching a movie you have to use headphones they didn't say you, you have to turn it off but they said you have to use headphones yeah I've actually never had that on an airplane, though, that people blast something. I hear it on Is it always public... someone's grandma? Yeah. I love it. I have it on, like, public transit on. and, you know, walking around, but never on an airplane. The, the, the last thing I want to talk about, actually, with the headset thing is yeah. I found it interesting that Apple pivoted. So they never... I don't, I don't think they ever said VR, and I don't think... I, if I remember correctly, they didn't mention the metaverse. They're entering a brand new exclusive area called spatial computing. So the it's, it's not a VR headset. It's spatial computing. Interesting. Did you see anything in that entire demo? You're just like, wow, that's that's a feature I gotta have. Because I did not. I was like, wow, that's ridiculous. That is stupid. They they literally brought over the iPhone. No, not the the launch pad from Mac OS icons. <laughs> and threw yeah. it on the screen. I'm like, I don't know. And then like these micro, like, like, what are you doing? You trying to milk a kitten? Like, I don't understand like what these gestures are for. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool. I can read that, but I can see how that can go wrong. Yeah, you know, I said it before. I'll say it again. I will not be happy with this headset until they have the minority report computer. Once they have that, I'll, I'm all in on it. Then you're all in. Yeah. I like, feel like this, this is the file. first time you said that twist it zoom in throw it off the screen you know all those gestures like tom cruise was doing do you guys remember uh i think it might have been i'll have to go back in time but there was a there was a website designer back when it was oh crap what was the one that was kind of, it was always like 3d based it was just coming out it was like not adobe but it was some other oh flash based and then one dude his name was billy bussy and he had the wildest website creations i had ever seen in my entire life he had set up like his website was like him behind a transparent piece of glass and it was like it was like the minority report that he had like knobs you can twist and turns when you click on stuff he would motion and gesture and do all that kind of stuff he was so far ahead of his time and then i think i went back to his website like years later and it's like 
oh, I think he found mushrooms. He's like, all he does is just paint portraits of people. <laughs> like so, so random. But like he was, he was damn good, man. That guy lost, was lost talent. Lost talent. Well, maybe not. Maybe he's happy with what he's doing now. But it, it was True. pretty incredible. I'll see if I can find it for you guys. I'll throw it in the show notes if I do find it. All right. Well, Glenn is currently boiling in his car. So let's move on to, we continue to get great comments about our dad joke of the week. Dad joke of the week. This week, Glenn's up. Hey, did you hear about the joke about experiencing deja vu? No. Did you hear about it? Deja vu? I feel like I'm having deja vu right now. <laughs> Maybe I said it wrong. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. It's a glitch in the matrix. A glitch in the matrix. That's it. All right. To wrap things up, Gmail's verification system is not quite ready. Boycott Reddit. Barracuda has given up on patching. And we doubt anyone will buy Apple's headset. That's all we have for this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Find us all on LinkedIn. Links will be in the description. Follow us on Instagram at Hebcac Podcast. Thank to all our listeners and subscribers who rated us five stars in the iTunes Store and Spotify and left us a review. We appreciate you all spreading the word to help grow the show. The best way to find us is to search for the Pebcac Podcast on your favorite podcast listening app. For my co-hosts Brian Deach and Glenn Medina, I'm Chris Louie. Thanks for listening. We'll see you all next week. And as always, have a nice day. Cheers, fellas. Bye, Felicia. I said it before you could. Have a nice day.